Okay, this video is going to cover the Kinetis uh, header file. Um, uh, we're we're going to look a little bit how how we use the header file that's given to you when you start a generic project um, in a quick application. Uh, while it's certainly true, you're always going to find example code out in the web for you know using the different modules for a microcontroller. It, it's good to know how to kind of do it yourself. Uh, it, you know, if you had to. Um, you know, I generally start all projects where, you know, I kind of want to program everything at the lowest level I can, um, except for, you know, really complex things like Ethernet or USB, then um, I try to look at example code, but you should certainly know how to go through a data sheet and do it. Um, so this is just a, I created a project called Header Test. It's just a blank bareboard project for um, MK40 uh, CPU that's on the quick stick module and it kind of generates this main.c and in main.c you see derivative.h this is kind of like a, a standard thing in all code warrior projects that there's always this derivative.h and if you kind of drill down in derivative.h it'll include the actual part derivative you're using so if it's cold fire it have cold fire stuff if it's hco8 it might have hco8 it might have more than just this include but in the case of the Kinetis, it goes right to uh, the header file for the device. Um, so before we look at the header file, what I'm going to do, uh, it, it's a, it can be a little overwhelming if you're somewhat new to the C programming language, um, you know, because there's a lot of stuff in there. We're going to look at, you know, when we might want to use the header file. So I'm going to bring up the, you know, the reference manual for the device. Remember, the data sheet for the device has things like the voltage uh, tolerance of the pins, you know, how fast you can clock it, you know, what's in the chip. But in terms of, like, how to program something, uh, it is in this uh, reference manual. That's how Freescale does it. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, we want to find, let's say uh, we want to talk to something. So... One of the first things to enable any peripheral is you always got to enable a clock. And I just happen to know there's a thing called the system integration module. It's just a kind of a central part of the chip that you know kind of controls clocks and whatnot to uh, the different the different uh, stuff. So the system integration module you notice here has all these registers, uh, and you notice. Uh, they certainly have like a defined, you know, layout and memory, and it kind of tells you here. Well, you could see if you wanted to make your own, you know, macros and symbols, and kind of use these absolute addresses to kind of talk to memory directly. Uh, but the the header file makes it such that you don't have to. You know, someone at Freescale went through, it made nice macros in a header file, so you can kind of refer to you know, registers by this mnemonic here. So you don't have to necessarily know that this is the address for the clock gating control, you know, register number one. So, you know, let's look at, to, to use any peripheral, you got to make sure there's always a clock to it. And the, the kinetis is kind of neat in that you can always uh, kill a clock to any peripheral to, to save power if you're not using it. Um, so let me, you know, if you look through here, for example, the first register has, you know, the UARTs, you know, uh, you know, the second one has the DAC. And, and generally, you look through here it, for, for any peripheral, you know, that's out there, you know, there is a bit that controls the clock. So, you know, the one that's kind of, you know, most germane as you're bringing up, you know, I generally want to start, you know, twiddling LEDs or port pins. So the ports themselves have clocks to them. There's synchronous logic inside the ports. Needs a clock, and by default, they, they may or may not be on. You kind of look here. Well, it says after reset, uh, port A, B, C, D, you know, clocks, you know, are, are disabled. You know, so we the first thing I do is enable a clock. So uh, let's say, for example, we want to use port A. All right, and it's in this register sim uh, underscore scg c5. Now you could certainly go back to that first table and uh, figure out that um, you know what the address of this register is, and kind of do pointer manipulation and see. Uh, but but you really don't have to. So let's go, for example, and um, let me bring up 
this window again. Um, I'm going to look in the header file. Now there's a ton of stuff in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I just want to find, you know, we'll go to sim underscore, you know, we'll go find and uh, go from there. So the first thing it brings down to is this peripheral group for the sim. It's a little bit more complex in this header file than, say, a standard, you know, a, a lot of header files are, are pretty simple. So let's say, you know, for a systems option register, you, let me just copy that, uh, bring this back up. One of the easiest ways to, um, you know, kind of do it yourself, you know, is notation like this. And um, a lot of different manufacturers will do something like this, where if you know the absolute address of a point in memory, if you simply take that number, cast it to a type, in this case it is a 32-bit number, so we're saying take this number, cast it to a pointer, meaning we're saying this is an address, and then we simply dereference it and say, I want the data at this memory address. So this is saying, this is a memory address at this absolute location. This extra star says, I want the data there. We could then go ahead and use this symbol anywhere in our code to write, read and write directly. Well, the Kinetis header file kind of takes it one step further. You know, the, the ar these ARM chips, memory's laid out, you know, really, really nice. There, you know, there's a, a wide 4 gigabit space. So the approach they take is they say, well, all of, um, you know, all of these over here, we can look at the sim. You know, they're kind of laid out in memory in a certain way. You know, we can see, we can look at these locations and see they're laid out. Well, what Freescale did is say, okay, let's create a structure, a data structure called the sim memory map pointer. And what that says is, we're going to create a pointer to a structure, and we just lay out members of a structure for all the registers. And in most cases, for example, SEG, C1, 2 are right after another. Once in a while, you'll see stuff like this in here, where if there's a lot of memory locations in between two registers, which we can see up here, between 7,000 and 8,004, the reason they put in 4096 and reserved is just so the compiler knows that between uh, option one and option two, it's all there. So that's the first thing to understand. What what the header file do, does, it kind of type defines a, a structure where it lays out all these um, memory locations. Now, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and we wanted... SCG5, so I'm going to copy, and let's see if we can find this symbol directly. Um, and I'm going to go, and I, there's, there's a lot of different stuff here, and you notice what we have to do is follow a little bit of a chain. They actually define a nice symbol called sim SCG C5, right here. Um, now, Without knowing anything else, you here could, you know, go in your code, type in sim underscore SEGC5 equals something, um, and sign it. But so let's kind of look at what, um, what this header file does. So we notice this defines this symbol as another symbol called SEG5 reg, and it passes it this sim base pointer. So this is just another macro. So let's see what sim base pointer is. And we could probably have to go backwards and oop, I don't want to replace. Let me undo all that. We just may be able to scroll up. Oh, right there it is. All sim base pointer is this define, it's saying cast this number and you notice it's the same as what's what's in the data she sheet uh, 4004 7000 we're casting it as a type of sim memory map pointer well what was that let's just scroll up here sim memory map pointer was this right here it's simply say, telling the compiler you know that symbol is a pointer to this data structure all right 
Now, let's go back down to, you know, um, here, where before it defined that simple sim SCG uh, C5, but it kind of redefined it as this. So it said, here's this new macro, um, and it has this thing called base, and it says whatever this base pointer is, and we passed in the pointer to, you know, this memory location up here, 4047000, and we're just going to dereference, you know, the SCG C5 uh, version of the struct, or, or I'm sorry, the member of the structure. Now, that seems like a lot of indirection there, but the reason they did that is whoever made this um, file here uh, in Code Warrior kind of knew that, you know, all this stuff is laid out in memory really nice. Almost every peripheral is, so it's really nice to, instead of one at a time declaring pointers like I first showed you where we kind of define an absolute pointer, define a generic structure. We point that structure to the base memory that it's kind of overlaid on, and then we can just edit that, you know, you, you know use it from there. Now, the nice thing for you as a programmer, uh, like I showed you before, each one of the registers, if we simply find it in the data sheet, sim SCG5, we will know that in this, in the uh, header, that they're going to define a nice symbol, and it just, and it's just you. It's used from there. We we don't need to know anything about how they implement in the header, but we don't actually need to know the absolute memory location, uh, and it's just kind of there. So what I'm going to do is remember that. All right, port A. Um, uh, the, the the control for port eight is bit nine. So here's the kind of cool part. I can just kind of come. Let's say I want to enable that bit. Code Warrior Smart, if we hit Control Space, it'll do code completion. So it, the code completion uh, logic in this uh, in the program here will kind of look through all the predefined symbols and I'll say type in SCG, um, oops, SCG, hit Control Space, uh, it would be C what? C5. So you could kind of scroll, oops, let me bring it back there. There's a bunch of junk in there, and we'll look at that really quick. But you notice, if we come all the way down here, there's C5, um, SCG C5. There it is. Now, from here, we know that we wanted bit 9. But let's say we wanted to set bit 9. Well, one thing we could do is just remember, oring a register with itself is the same as setting. We could take 1, shift it over by 9 bits. We could we could do do it that way. Um, right? We could also remember bit nine would be what? That's like a uh, you know zero X two hundred hex because bit eight would be well one zero zero bit nine would be that. Well the nice thing about it is they also make nice defines for each one of you know, these bits in a register. And what we're going to do is, let me type in sim or equals sim scg5. Uh, then I'll hit underscore. Any bit in a register, for example, there is a port A bit defined, you know, in the data sheet. Their general syntax is is that if you were to hit the port A bit and that's defined in a register, it works out like this. You've got to give the register name, underscore, the bit name defined in the data sheet, then underscore mask. All right? Now, let's just go and look to see what that is. All right, we might have to go backward. This, so there it is. And you notice it it defines sim scgc5 underscore port a underscore mask is a 200 uh, um, it hex, and that and that makes sense. And we got to make sure to say mask because they also they also have like always another define called shift, which says how many bits up is it 